Which of us remain home? Of course, some are still home. This is your life stream. But it is incumbent on every child of God not to forsake, uh, to forsake themselves, to assemble themselves together in the house of the Lord and worshiping the very God of our salvation. It's incumbent that you scatter yourselves in the house of God for worship. Remember, because some of you got so comfortable out there, staying home listening, sending your money by way of PayPal and, and all those other social means of making your contributions, and you feel comfortable. But that isn't God's plan, because we understand that circumstances dictated the change in some things during the pandemic, but the pandemic virtually not completely over, but we are treating it as if it is over. So those of you that are home, wherever you are, across the nation, you know the part of ministries, wherever you are, remember your commitment. Don't forsake to assemble yourselves together in the house of the Lord. So uh, this morning, we let you know that uh, we will be live streaming during our Sunday morning worship at 12 o'clock doing a regular service. Not a program type service, but a regular service. We're going to be praising and magnifying and glorifying God. Maybe he dancing and speaking in tongues and running all over the house. That's what happens when you have a Pentecostal experience. Why don't somebody say hallelujah somewhere? So we're really looking, looking really, 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 really looking forward to that. As I was alluding to a few minutes ago, those who gave the support of the pandemic, do the pandemic, we thank God for those gifts, uh, especially from our Sunday evening uh, live stream, you know, those that have supported our brutal efforts so faithfully, and you have been a tremendous support. And again, we want you to know that we appreciate all your gifts your prayers and support that you've given to this ministry. At this time, we're going to call Brother Darby with us to bless us. And, and as we're going to worship God, we'll have the announcements and, and we'll move forward accordingly. Mother, come bless us. Somebody lift your hands to the God and give him praise in his eyes.
welcome you to Refuge Global Ministries located at 316 South Adel Avenue right here in Deland, Florida where our pastor is Bishop James Darby. We would like to invite you to our services. We do have Sunday school on Sunday mornings beginning at 930. And as Bishop has alluded already on this morning, on next week Sunday, which is July 14th, our services for Sunday morning service will be starting at 11.15. Our live stream will be beginning at noon. That will begin on next week Sunday. Our Sunday evening service will remain at 6.30 p.m. And our Bible study is on Tuesday nights beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. Along with our women ministries are on Thursday nights beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. And we do invite you to those services. If you would like to participate in the ministry of giving, you can do so by way of Cash App. Our Cash App tag is dollar sign Refuge Global Men. And Men is spelled M-I-N. You can also send in your gifts through Givelify. The name under Givelify is Greater Refuge the Land. Or you can send in your gifts through Zelle using our email address, which is the land refuge 386 at gmail.com. You can also mail in your gifts using our mailing address, which is 316 South Adel Avenue, Deland, Florida, and the zip code is 32720. I'd like to let you know that we are a 501c3 ministry. This information has already been pinned into the live stream. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget
glory and to give him the praise. Because he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Somebody went to bed last night and didn't wake up. So we are blessed to be here, to have wicked be uh, here, yeah, wherever you may be, your car, in your home, or wherever. You are blessed today. Hallelujah. So we're going to do a little bit of this say how we are blessed in the city.
the Lord. Everybody. Boy, and dear. We appreciate our great God who gave his son. His son gave his life. And through his life, we are free. I want to take note of chapter 4, verses 13 through verses 18 of the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Then I will relate to a few scriptures from the book of Acts of the Apostles. But the text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. We appreciate all the people of God that in the house, the ministry of staff, Dr. Lawrence Evangelist Darby, Teacher Goosby, and the others that are present. I say teacher Goosby, Mr. Goosby's ministry is teaching ministry. I was in South America a couple of months ago. I've been going there for better than 15 years. Preaching my head off. And this last I went, I decided to teach. And that was the most effective trip in the city we had outside of the evangelistic work in South America. Teaching is very important. It may not be as emotional as stimulating, but it's very, very important. Development of the sketch to develop spiritual character is very much contributed to the ministerial of teaching. And the book of First says it only in chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We're going to read these verses. But I would not have you to be ignorant. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerned them which are asleep, those that are in the grave, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even though them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not present them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes. Wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. This is an account of the rapture, of course, of many biblical scholars and Ministerial staffs to preach the gospel, the word itself, rapture is not in the Bible, but it's simply meant to be called up. To be called up. The first scripture reference to one that was called up, left earth, and went to heaven was Enoch. Very little is mentioned about Enoch. But one thing about him, you know that he pleased God. Because that was the testimony 
they were left behind. And the next individual, of course, was Elijah. Went to heaven in a chariot. And third person this was Jesus himself called up. But then they all left here to see one by one. But when this rapture take place, the told body of Christ, all the people of God up at that time will be called up collectively. It does not relate to the name of a church or the title of an organization Amen. or denomination. Yes. It relates to the total body of Christ. Yes. He called up together Amen. to meet the Lord in the air. Now the Paul took the time out to explain to them the doctrine relevant to the first resurrection and the result of those that are going to be in the first resurrection, the body of Christ, including the Old Testament saints, New Testament saints. This relates to the church. Now those of the tribulation have not will take part in this rapture. They will be living, of course, some will die during tribulation. I mean the labor bodies will be caught up out the bodies, but spirits and souls because collectively they'll be coming back with the Lord, with the church. The church is Christ's body. The Bible declares, chapter 12, verse 13 of the book of 1 Corinthians. For you all are baptized into one body, not a denomination. Of course, that's one thing that has divided the body of Christ. Denominations. Denominations. God never had a denomination. God has a body. But anyone that's a part of his body have one thing in common. That is, they've been born of the Spirit of God. And Paul says to them, I don't want you to be without knowledge. I want you to understand but you don't cry and weep and wail as people that don't have any hope. That you don't sorrow as they do because you have hope. You died in Christ and that's not the end. It is really the beginning. Your time here Maybe 75, 85, or 90 years. Yeah. But once you are resurrected and be caught up with the Lord in the air, it's for eternity. It's for eternity. So there's hope beyond the grave. Hope. So others are crying and weeping. You may shed tears, but there's a comfort in the minds and the lives of the people of God. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again, those asleep in Jesus will God bring with him when he comes. Now, I emphasize so emphatically and take the time. You may say you're repeating yourself. That's my intention. Mm -hmm. To repeat myself 
that you might understand what I'm saying. And secondly, that you can take the words of the scripture that are quoted to you from the word of God and make a comparison with those that are preached by men every day on television across the nation and around the world. Now, I mentioned that God has one church, not one denomination, but one church. The devil has sought to destroy that church. He tried a number of tactics to nullify, to hinder the body of Christ. Early on, they were crucified. Some were burned at the stakes or were placed in arenas with lions because of the stand for Jesus Christ and their testimony. Yes, it happened. But through all of this strategizing, in all of the tactics that he conjured up around his demons and the developing ways to stop the church, he came up with one of the most important strategies, and that was to divide the body of Christ. That's his major. His major component that he uses to hinder the body of Christ. Divide and what? Conquer. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Everybody asks, who are these? Who are these that are going to be Hold up. The Lord is going to descend from heaven with a shout. The bark of an archangel. The trumpet of God is going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to come out of the grave. Who are these? Well, let's go to the Word of God. Word. Amen. Who are members of the real church? Let's go back to the Word of God. Amen. To the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. If you want the truth of anything, you have to go back to the greatest words. If you want to solve a crime, you have to go back to the place of the crime and then go forward. Oh, yes. If you want to understand who are a part of the church, what is the church made of? Who are the members of the church, not whose name is on the church roll, but who are part of the body of Christ? Then I say over and over again. Not that I'm also words, but I don't have something to preach. I can preach to thousands of subjects and very little repeat, repeating myself. But I purpose to deal with chapter one and chapter two of the book of Acts, my friends. That's where the church starts. That's where the church starts. Oh, thank you, my Lord. So, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures out there. And those of you that wish to take notes so that you might be edified and remember a little later. Let's go to the first chapter of the book of Acts. Jesus, just before it goes back to heaven, 
in verse 4. Acts chapter 1. Take the time out to write the scriptures down, those of you that are listening. Whether you're here or whether you're by my street. Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven now. The church is not started, but he's getting his folk ready to become a member of his church. Verse 4, chapter 1. And being your sinners together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5. And John dearly baptized with water, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse 8 says to them, after you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power, and you will be his witnesses everywhere, Jerusalem, Jesus, to Mary, everywhere, to other but part of the earth. Now, he says to them, not to the Father, but go into the upper room and wait for the Holy Spirit to come. All right? Verse 13. And when they would come in, they went up into the upper room where both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, so the Matthews and Simon, Zelenite, and Judas, the brother of James. They were the twelve apostles. Because Matthew said, I take a Judas's place. All right, verse 14. This is, we're talking about those that went into the upper room waiting for the Holy Ghost. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. And Mary, oh, Mary, Jesus' mother, she goes to receive the Holy Spirit. Lord say you must be born again. She has to be born again. Of the Spirit. Chapter 3, St. John. With the other women. And the mother of Jesus. And with his brethren. Jesus had four brothers. James, Jude, Simon, and the other son, and I think of his name, he'd come to me. I've had one of those Biden moments. <laughs> waiting for his four brothers, waiting for the Holy Spirit. Mind you, he is mama, Jesus is mother. He is twelve of disciples, apostles. And here, his four brothers. There's a time when they didn't believe that Jesus was a savior. The Bible said they didn't believe. But now they believe that their brother, Jesus, was the savior. And the brother had to save the brothers. They were all there, waiting for the Holy Ghost. The Lord has started his church. Now let us go flip over to chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was so they come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. Where they were sitting. They appeared on them clothing tongues like as a fire to set on each of them. And they were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost and began to do what? As the Spirit gave them utterance, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Mary, the mother of Jesus, 
speaking in tongues. James, Joe, Josie, and Simon, his four brothers, speaking in tongues. The twelve disciples, apostles, speaking in tongues. All the others here, speaking in tongues. This was the beginning of the church. It's something that every day you hear preachers preach a sermon. In two seconds flat, repeat these words and then tell you you're saved. And you're ready for heaven. When they received the Holy Ghost, Peter preached to them. First, he had to explain to them what was happening. Something was happening that had never happened before. The Lord had sealed 120 people with the Holy Spirit. There were thousands there gathered. And they heard what was going on in that upper room where the, this, the church was being born. And there were those after Peter preached such a dynamic message. They asked a question as if they were wanting to be a part of what's happening. What must we do that we can have the same experience that you all are having? You don't hear this. You skip over this. The devil has a way of trying to nullify the word of God. This is the you been in counts of preachers. Some of you believe in water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe in the reception of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. But because of popularity, they don't want you to be on the air. And you will compromise. Peter stood there. In spite of what all the opposition had against him, unfolded the word of God. Satan and crown, not compromising. Will you compromise? Are you afraid to speak the word? Then there was a go right to the scripture and jump over it. Right. Something is a flying in front of milk. Right? Repent and jump over it. And be baptized and tell you that it's not necessary. That's a lie from the pitch of hell. Yeah. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. But you say, you shall be saved, Jesus said. But you say, it's not a part of salvation. How can one fix their tongue enough to utter such a damnable lie from the pits of hell? Wow. How? Repent, he says, and be baptized. Not some of you, not Methodist, not Baptist, not Church of God in Christ, not Church of our Lord, Church of whatever. He said, repent every one of you and be baptized. It's not for one group, not for another group, it's for the whole world. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was the beginning of the church. Started with 120, 
And then 3,000 added to the body of Christ. So the devil says, I want to stop this church. Crucify him. Put him in jail. Beat him. Kill him. Try to stop the church. But thank God Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And unless this church know I'm coming back to get you. You got to go through some stuff. But I'm coming back to get you. Oh God, I preach. I'm going to wait. I'm going to prepare peace for you. And where I am, you're going to be there also. Can I get a witness in the house? His church had to go through some stuff. But his church is still baptized in his day. Church had to go through some stuff. But his church is still talking in tongues. Can I get a witness in the house? His church is real. His church the Holy Ghost sealed. His church is sound baptized. The church know how to please him. I wonder if anybody in the house, I wonder if anybody listening by the live stream that know how to praise him. You're going through some stuff. The demons of hell are trying to turn you back. The demons of hell are trying to destroy you. The demons of hell are trying to take your testimony away from you. The demon of hell, can I get the minutes on the right side over here? The demon of hell, this is what I'm saying here. Praise the name of our God. Can I come out and tell the Lord's sake? The demon of hell wants to stop what's going on in your life. Praise our God. But somehow God's folk are going to make it. Tell your neighbor, I, I'm going to make it. Because I'm in Hallelujah. I'm in rapture then. I'm getting ready for the first resurrection. Can somebody tell the name? I, I, I'm getting ready for the first resurrection. I, I'm getting ready for the trumpet sound to get out of here. I, I'm getting ready. All my troubles, all my sorrows. I'm getting ready to tell my trouble my life. I get ready to tell no ink and bottle. Bye bye. Can I get the witness of it? Some of you going through some stuff. Yes, sir. Early in the morning, you got pain in your body. Hurt when you take your right foot and put it outside the bed. You got to take the left leg and help you to cross. My God, you're going to tell that stuff bye bye. Hallelujah. Oh! that the devil is bringing on your life to try to stop you. are going to tell him, I got the victory now. Can somebody tell the Lord, say, oh, everything, everything, oh, my soul, it's getting ready to be old with you. That's why you got to hold on to Jesus, say, he that endures to the end. The same shall be saved. He that endures. You got to go through. They tell you that you're holy rolling. But that's all right. If I got to roll, I'll roll all night. <laughs> your tongue talking, fool. There was a time when you used to say, Say this out, fool. You didn't take all of that. You're making too much noise. You remember that? Signified folk, they make too much noise. Got all them drums, all them tambourines, and jumping all over the place. But they found out this stuff works. <laughs> and then they stopped imitating us. They got the organ to get out backstage and all the musicians to play for them. Got the drums rolling. Got the tambourines. And some of you got a, got a fake shot. And they got a fake tongue. But thank God for the real thing. 
Thank God for the real thing. Tell somebody I got the real thing. I'm a part of the real church. I'm a part of the real church. I'm not the nomination of God. Can I get a witness in here? But I'm heaven bound. My name is written in heaven. Oh God, my record is on high. Can I get a witness in the house? I'm a part of the real thing. I got the real thing. I got what people got on the day of Pentecost. I have the same thing that Mary, the mother of Jesus, got on the day of Pentecost. Can somebody tell the Lord, thank you? I got the real thing. I don't have a faith, but I got the real thing. I don't have praise I got to make up physical direction, but I got the real thing. When the Holy Ghost hits me, when the Holy Ghost ever hit anybody in here, oh, praise our Lord. My wife asked the other day, she said, you be jumping in the bed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes there may be something in the foot, but sometimes it's the Holy Ghost. Anybody ever jump in the bed? You sit and ride down the road in your car. That's when they got the real thing. You're cooking your grits and lemon and, and, and bacon and, and eggs. Hallelujah. You got the real thing. You're going to cook them overnight. But something get a hold to you cook them well done. Can I get a witness in there? You got the real thing. And that's what they got on the day of Pentecost. They thought they were drunk. Say they've been drinking new wine. But Peter clarified the issue. And then the church was going through some stuff. And Paul had it on his missionary trip. On his second trip go over to Thessalonica and get some sacred folk among praise our God, some idol worshippers. And the Lord filled them with the Holy Ghost. And Paul told him, Jesus is coming back. But they didn't quite understand it. So he had it clarified. Well, yeah, he wrote twice relevant to this subject. But right now, we need some folk that got to go back to Thessalonica. And remember that Jesus is coming. Can I get a witness in this house? Tell somebody, Jesus is coming. Come on, say it again. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Get ready. There's a rapture going to happen. Get ready. Something is going 